see some key players from the Minnesota Vikings being shipped out before the NFL trade deadline, which is only a couple weeks away. Obviously, with the Vikings starting off the season, one in four, a lot of Minnesota Vikings could find their names on the trade block. So today, we're going to be looking at eight players that I think the Vikings could trade away before the NFL trade deadline. But first off, I do want to get this out of the way. I think this only happens if they lose this Sunday. I think if they do end up beating the Bears in Chicago this Sunday, I could really see the Minnesota Vikings still trying to, you know, try to accumulate some wins here and, uh, you know, potentially go and still try to make a run this season. So that's only before or only if the Vikings do lose this Sunday. But speaking about this Sunday, we have a sub battle against our Bears Now channel here at Chat Sports. Listen, I think the Vikings are going to beat them on the field. Let's beat them off the field. I'm one competitive SOB. I want to beat Bears now in sub, so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. We we have a little ways to go right now, so make sure you guys lock us in. Help us out and subscribe to the best Vikings channels here on YouTube. But number one, the number one trade candidate for the Minnesota Vikings, no doubt has to be Kirk Cousins. Um, Listen, we've heard the reports that there are multiple teams that could be interested in Kirk if the Vikings do you know, end up going to kind of a full-on tank mode here. And listen, Kirk's been playing good ball. By no means is Kirk the problem with the Vikings this season. He has been pretty freaking good. I've seen key moments he's had struggles. The turnovers are definitely an issue for Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings. So, listen, I could see Kirk on the block. It would be interesting to see what type of picks the Vikings could get for a guy like Kirk Cousins. But we've seen three teams connected to him. The Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, obviously they're not too happy with their play out of Kenny Pickett. That one's probably the most unlikely out of these three. But the Atlanta Falcons, I mean, they have a good roster around Desmond Ritter. They were able to win some games with the you know, poor quarterback play. Obviously, the New York Jets have been uh, connected to the Vikes as well. But then Kirk Cousins, this season, he's been fantastic. I mean, 13 touchdowns, uh, most in the NFL right now. The second most yards in the league with just under 1,500. Obviously, the turnovers are an issue with four interceptions and multiple fumbles on the year. But my whole take with the Kirk Cousins situation, if you do plan on getting a quarterback in next year's draft, like if that is your situation, like why not go and get draft capital? And why not try to accumulate a ton of draft picks for then you could get a potential trade up in next year's draft if you have your eyes set on maybe like a Drake May at two or a team that could be slotted in to take this or at the second overall pick, you know, could be taking trade calls and you have more draft capital than the other team. So listen, I don't think it's likely Kirk gets traded. He's got a no trade clause, but just something to keep your eye on. Maybe the Jets say, screw it. We think this team's good enough to go win. We'll give you a first round pick. But I'm just curious on this one. What type of draft pick do you think the Vikings could get for Kirk Cousins? I'll make this pin comment on today's video. So let me know your thoughts known down in the comment section. What type of draft pick could the Vikings get for Kirk? Number two for me is KJ Osborne. Uh, listen, KJ Osborne has not been good this season for the Minnesota Vikings, but maybe a change of scenery could help. Maybe a team that needs wide receiver help could be looking to add in, you know, the fourth round player or fourth year player out of Miami. But I mean, hey, Osborne's been struggling. He's got three drops on the year, only 166 yards and a PFF grade of 51.6. Again, KJ probably get a sixth or a seventh for him. Still a young guy, but he's in a contract year. So maybe KJ could be on the way out. Number three for me is I think a player you could get a good amount for, and that's Ezra Cleveland who I think Ezra Cleveland has completely impressed me during this season. Uh, Ezra, you know, he has been kind of that roller coaster throughout his career where I have great games and bad games, but this year he's been incredibly consistent. He's actually the 10th rated guard according to PFF this season. He's got a 73.7 overall grade, pass blocking at 72.4, run blocking at 73.1, and it's so funny. He's just been the uh, pretty much the definition of consistency, which has never been his norm at that left guard spot. Coming up just around the corner, I'm going to have more Vikings trade candidates for you guys. There's some shockers on there, so make sure you guys stay tuned. But first, I do want to give a big-time shout-out to Prize Picks, the sponsor of today's edition of Vikings Now. Prize Picks is the largest independently-owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America, and it is the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling versus thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Prize Picks is the most fun I've had. Uh, winning up to 25 times my money this football season. Quick withdrawals, easy game plan, enormous selection of players and stat types is what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. And my plays for this weekend, I'm going to go Brock Purdy, more than 236 and a half passing yards. He just killed the Dallas Cowboys last Sunday night. I think he's going to do it again. And then Tua, he's been on a heater this year. I'm going to go more than 284 and a half for him. You guys can join me and on or join with me uh, in on the fun at PrizePicks.com/slash CLNS. 
one more time, go to prizefix.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a deposit match up to $100. So number four for me is Harrison Phillips. Uh, obviously, Harrison Phillips and Ed had the greatest year uh, this season, but maybe a team could be looking to add some D-line depth. To, he is that veteran you know, in the middle of the defense where maybe a team like maybe Buffalo even, he could return back home. But he's a good locker room guy. So Harrison Phillips kind of falls into this veteran category for the Minnesota Vikings of these guys that could potentially be dealt. But again, this is all a hypothetical if the Vikings do lose this Sunday. And this Sunday, we are going to be live here on the channel. We're going to be going live 45 minutes before kickoff. If you guys see this thumbnail on your YouTube page, make sure you click on it. Our watch parties are a ton of fun here at the channel. You know, I don't know. I think it's the most fun thing we do here at Chat Sports. Make sure you guys tune in. 11-15 this Sunday. Be there. I got two edges now for the Minnesota Vikings. Marcus Davenport and then also Daniil Hunter. Listen, Marcus Davenport, he has actually had a pretty solid start to the year. He was good against the Carolina Panthers, and he was pretty good last week against the Kansas City Chiefs. But obviously injuries kept him out the first couple of weeks. But then Daniil Hunter is that big-time name that a lot of teams are going to be calling you about. Actually, Darren Wolfson reported this about an hour before filming that the Jacksonville Jaguars are uh, a team that could be interested in Daniil Hunter, and they have made calls. But both of them are on expiring contracts, which means the team could be saying, we could throw you a third or a fourth, and we'll get an edge rusher just for the end of the season and the playoff run. I don't know. I think those two are probably the two most likely to be dealt out of anybody on this list. But we actually have some contenders that could be looking to add an edge. I mean, the Jacksonville Jaguars in the NFC South, that NFC South is wide, or AFC South. The AFC South is wide open right now. I mean, the Jags would be looking around saying, we just need that guy to get us over the hump. Or even like a Houston Texans team. They're kind of going on a shocking run right here. They could use some help in the edge department, pair him up with D'Amico. Like, I think that could be a very interesting team as well. Also, the Bills and Chiefs, you always know they're in the market trying to make a run. And then the Rams. The Rams have been shockingly good this year. Same with the Buccaneers. You know, they've been aggressive in years past. Maybe they could be hitting up the Vikings for Hunter or for Daniil Hunter. But those are five teams that definitely keep your eyes on that could ask for Daniil Hunter or Marcus Davenport, but what if they call you and ask you for a third or give you a third round pick for Daniil Hunter? Would you say Y for yes or would you say N for no to that deal? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Jordan Hicks is an interesting one, and ESPN actually put out an article suggesting Jordan Hicks to the Buffalo Bills, and it makes a ton of sense. And I think the Bills are just a team in general you need to watch out for for trading for a linebacker because. You know, they have had brutal injuries to that defense. You lost Tredavious, Wright for the, or Tredavious White for the rest of the season. You lost Matt Milano for the rest of the season as well. So they could be hitting up a guy like Jordan Hicks, who I think Jordan Hicks has shockingly played great. You know, think about this offseason. I was talking about cutting Jordan Hicks because he could have saved $5.5 million, and I was shocked the Vikings didn't. But for good reason, they kept him along, and he has been one of the better you know, middle linebackers in the league this season. PFF gave him an 80.9 overall grade. He's been great in the run defense. He's actually been way better in pass coverage than in years past. I thought last season he looked like he lost a step. Seemed like this year he got that step right on back. So Jordan Hicks, him to the Buffalo Bills. Watch out for that one. This one kind of hurts. Uh, Harrison Smith, uh, one of my favorite Vikings players of all times. Uh, he kind of grew my love for the Vikings. Uh, or, you know, it's growing up watching him. Man, this one would definitely hurt. But Harrison Smith... He's kind of got his swag back this season, and the game that stood out to me was that game against the Panthers. I mean, these stats are absolutely ridiculous. 14 tackles, three sacks, a forced fumble, two TFLs. Harrison Smith's just been, you know, he's just been the definition of consistency for the Minnesota Vikings, and like I said, this one would hurt the most, no doubt. Like, Harry, you know, Eric Kendricks, like the Daniel Hunters, like the Everson Griffins, like those Mike Zimmer defensive guys, like Xavier Rhodes, like... Those are the types of dudes that I think would just losing them would absolutely hurt the most. So, listen, those are some names that I had uh, for the Vikings for the potentially losing uh, during the trade deadline. Kirk, KJ, Ezra, Harrison Phillips, and then Davenport and Hunter at the edge spot, and then Jordan Hicks and Harrison Smith. Those are eight guys just to keep your eyes out on if the Vikings do lose this Sunday. But I got to ask you guys, who do you guys got this Sunday? Vikings, Bears in Chicago. I know we're both one and four football teams, but I would like to win this one. Give me a V for Vikings or give me a B for Bears down in the comments section. As always, remember you guys to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys tune in this Sunday. Vikings, Bears, I can't freaking wait. Our watch parties are a ton of fun, so make sure you guys tune in as well. But see you guys next time. As always, Skull Vikes, baby.